With 2021 coming to an end and with some of the most evident signs that the video game devs no longer care about what the fuck we want, I asked my Discord community and Twitter followers what they wanted to see, and as you can see on the screen, the results were kind of mixed, but in favor of the games that save 2021. But being the half pessimistic and half optimistic asshole that my community knows me as, it just wasn't right for me to talk about the year saving games, because who wants to hear about that shit? So today, we are going to talk about the games that saved 2021 and the reasons why 2021 was quite possibly the worst year for the video game industry. I also want to make something clear from the jump. These are games that only I have played. Let me say it again. Only games I have played with the exception of a few. So please don't comment saying, what about this game? Because there's a 10 out of 10 chance I didn't play it and I probably don't know shit about it and really don't care to know anything about it. So without further ado, let's get into the fucking video. Let's talk about a game that is loved by many MMORPG fans. On February 2nd, 2021, Valheim released on Steam. It was a massive open world survival game where you collected wood, hunted animals, built houses, and explored this massive, and I mean fucking massive world. The graphics were very bare bones, but it was a sigh of relief and the game could be played virtually any way you wanted. Within the first week, it had grown to over 1 million players worldwide, and you could host your own games, play with friends, and discover the world together. There was only one problem. In order for you to play the game properly, you had to pretty much buy a server because their servers were absolutely terrible. I remember playing this game with some friends and so many times I would see lag so intense I would be seeing them perform actions they did two minutes ago, and I'm not even fucking joking. The boss fights you would get into were fun and challenging, but once you beat all five bosses, that's pretty much it for the game. It was fun for what it was, but I got bored of it so quick. They have released content for it such as Hearth and Home, but other than that, not much has changed. I know for a fact I will more than likely not go back to it. Not the worst game of the year, but more disappointing than anything. Let's talk about the video game equivalent of copying someone's homework after said someone copied someone else's homework. On May 1st, 2021, Scavengers released as a free to play game and what do you know, it still fucking is. This game is best described as a deadly cocktail of Apex, Hyperscape, and a disappointing third person battle royale like the video game industry needed any more of these fucking games. They took the laziest concept ever created and somehow made it worse. This hunk of shit wrapped in dollar store gift wrap was the worst battle royale I've ever fucking played. The objective was spawn, collect nodes, keep them for the entire game, and then fight to the death to deposit them on a ship, and then fight to stay on the ship before it took off. That's pretty much it. The game was boring, had semi-decent graphics, but gave you the same amount of enjoyment as watching Allier's Overwatch videos and had the most bitch-made people playing it. The guns felt spongy, hitboxes were the size of the Eiffel Tower, and the fundamentals of the game left many players wondering, why the fuck was this even invented? Also, they had blizzards that killed you, so that was fun. And they had random bears that would attack you and maul you to death. So imagine this scenario. You're fighting players, a blizzard comes in. While you're trying not to die, you're freezing to fucking death. And while you're trying to escape gunfire and frostbite, a random fucking grizzly shows up and tried to make your ass less than or equal to grass. This was by far one of the worst games I've played, and as of November 2021, the devs are planning on making the game better and attempting to push it into more mainstream gaming, I see this game going absolutely nowhere really, except maybe in the bin, where it belongs. Now let's take a hop, skip, and a jump to April Fool's Day because this one felt like we were getting goddamn trolled. Remember how I said in the beginning that there were going to be a few games I haven't played? Well this one kind of fits that category. I played the demo, but the demo was just the game really, it was essentially the same thing. On April 1st, 2021, Outriders released on Steam, and after the hype surrounding it was immense and people thought it was going to be the next Destiny killer, it came as an absolute shock when this game released and it was terribly broken and buggy. I remember playing the beta and I just remember how bad the gun mechanics were, the AI was slower than a Windows 95 computer, and the guns were spongier than, um, well, a uh, sponge. You're, you're a fucking idiot. 
Many Steam reviews say that it lacks content uniqueness. Many people say that the game is fun, but they keep seeing the same enemies over and over again. Apparently, most of the issues have been fixed with the game currently sitting at mostly positive reviews on Steam, but it doesn't excuse the bumpy ride that was paved by Outriders. Also, the game is still 60 fucking dollars, so that's gonna be a pass for me, my guy. On May 7th, 2021, Resident Evil Village released and it was extremely popular amongst streamers and playthrough YouTubers. The game was basically a prequel to Resident Evil Biohazard and offered a lot of context and backstory leading up to the story of Biohazard. Before this game released, dudes all over the internet were popping buttons on their pants to this tall bitch. The gameplay was really good and enjoyable, but I never beat it. The final boss was a bitch and a half to beat, and with my patience running low and anger issues running on all 12 cylinders, I lost hope in beating it, so I said fuck it. I haven't yet beat this game, but I've already seen the ending. There's also going to be a PvP mode coming in 2022 called Resident Evil RE Verse. Again, I've seen some gameplay of it and it looks okay. This game is nowhere near the worst game to be released this year, but it left me feeling unamused and angry, probably because I'm ass at puzzle games, but fuck it, it's going here. Now, let's go ahead and uh, fast forward a little bit to November 5th, 2021. The 18th installment in the Call of Duty series, Call of Duty Vanguard released on pretty much every platform except for the Nintendo Switch and mobile platforms. I already did a video on Call of Duty Vanguard, but I want to expand on what I said in my previous video. Much of the same still applies, such as the gun mechanics and overall gameplay feeling solid, but I forgot to mention one thing the campaign. The campaign for Vanguard is absolutely amazing. You get to play as multiple characters and it tells a story that does not get boring or old. But that's really about it. The campaign is currently carrying this game into a not so bad category. But why do I still feel like the game is nothing to write home about and honestly wish the game was never released? Because, like I said, in the Vanguard video I made, it's almost no different than Modern Warfare 2019. Also, to top off why I don't like this game, it's mainly because of the company behind the development of Vanguard. Activision in 2021 has spent most of their time in the courtroom instead of the quality control department. And with constant talks of employees leaving or threatening to leave, the theory I have is simple. They made this game as quickly as they could with the most amount of people as humanly possible to make up for all the money they've lost in court, which, as of July 2021, was around 7 $7.7 billion. Next time Activision, invest in better employee training videos. If you know, you know. Nice letter. Now this isn't the end of the video because I want to appeal to the other members of my community who wanted to see games that actually saved 2021 from the crippling depression known as the video game market. There are a lot of games that came out this year I didn't play because of a full time job and lack of money from playing the very popular game of life. But I can say without a measurable doubt that these two games carried the year even though they just came out. So without further ado, let's get into it. On November 9th, 2021, the fifth installment of a game series going on almost 10 years, Forza Horizon 5 blessed us all like the second coming of Christ himself. For those who don't know, Forza Horizon is an open world multiplayer racing game where you compete in races, challenges, do PR stunts like drift zones, stunt jumps, speed traps, etc. to become Forza Horizon's VIP. They also have XP boards and fast travel boards you drive into like Paul. I take it back, I take it back, I take it back, I take it back. Oh, okay, uh, let me just rewrite this joke real quick. They also have XP boards and fast travel boards you can drive into like your name is Dale Earnhardt Sr. Hey, did it clear? <laughs> Fuck it, we can live with it. They also have PvP races like Drifting and Playground Games, which have about four or five different modes along with one of my favorite modes in Forza Horizon, the Forza Horizon Arcade. The Forza Horizon Arcade is essentially just going to an area with other players and as a team do different challenges, but the reason why this game is so goddamn good is because there's so much stuff to do. The graphics are nice, the dialogue is cheesy but at times comical, mostly comically cheesy, but everything has a reason. 
Even if you only do a few races, you can still get the full enjoyment of the game. You can do shit to help build Horizon Outpost, and in this game alone, there are 546 cars to unlock. Once you unlock cars from a certain company, you get rewards like XP and wheel spins. They also have seasonal events with challenges so you can unlock rare cars. There is so much to this game that the only way you will be able to understand what I'm saying is by simply playing it. And since it's a Turn 10 Studios game published by Microsoft, it's free on Game Pass. Or you can buy it on Steam for 60 bucks. Either way, you won't be steered wrong with Forza Horizon 5. <laughs> you, you like my puns? No? Well, fuck you. Kicking down the fucking door and forcing entry like a well-trained SWAT team, Halo Infinite made its full release on December 7th, 2021. This is the 13th installment stretching over a fantastic and pretty successful 20 years. The reason why I say 13 is because I'm counting Halo Wars 1 and 2, Halo Fireteam Raven, Halo 3 ODST, Halo Spartan Assault, and Halo Spartan Strike, along with Halo Reach. I have been playing Halo for close to 17 years. It all started one Christmas back in 2004. My parents bought me and my brother the BBC of video game consoles, the OG Xbox. And we played Halo Combat Evolved. We immediately fell in love with the series. Since then, Halo has been a huge part of my life. But what makes Infinite so great? Let's state the obvious. It's fucking free. A AAA company that isn't ran by Bill Cosby's doppelganger, I'm looking at you Activision, making a free multiplayer game? A game that doesn't force a battle pass down your throat? A game with a battle pass that lasts 180 days that allows you to continue unlocking items from it after the 180 days is passed? Well slap my ass and call me a dirty bitch, it's a dream come true. The game mechanics though in some aspects feel a bit spongy, but are fucking awesome. Graphics, top tier. Audio dynamics, amazing. Level progression, it could use some work, but honestly, if this is the game to launch us into 2022, then it's starting off fucking solid. The Halo community as of recording this video has done some deplorable shit like dox some people over at 343, and I find that absolutely deplorable by all means. If this game makes you want to commit a cybercrime, stop what you're doing, Go outside and touch some grass. Well, stick your cock in an anthill for all I care about. 343 busted their ass making this game after the unbleachable shit stain known as Halo 5 was looked at in not so good light. Give them credit and allow them to improve it. Halo Infinite is leaps and bounds above Halo 5 in every way. It feels like a competitive shooter, but it feels like a well thought out one. Unlike other FPS games that came out this year, this one was by far the best one and takes the fucking cake and just runs with it. Going into 2022, I have plans on making another one of these videos uh, towards the end of the year. Ubisoft is releasing one if not two games, and before you ask, I ain't playing them. But they have a very special spot already on this list. Don't worry y'all, I got you. I also stream here on YouTube, so click that subscribe button and hit that bell. Happy holidays and happy new years, everyone. My name is Redbeard Mortis. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you in the next one. But until then, I am fucking out of here.